And while her music came to define the Motown sound, she left that record company in 1981 to strike out on her own. Her name became synonymous with huge shows, beautiful costumes, glamour, and glitter. Anyone who saw her sing in New York City Central Park in 1983 will never forget it. Only Diana Ross would be reluctant to leave the stage in the middle of a rainstorm. She has always been determined. She has always known what she wants. She usually gets it. Even with her image as a diva, Diana has constantly maintained that her greatest priority is that of being a mother. At the time of our first interview in 1978, her three daughters, Rhonda, Tracy, and Chudney, were seven, six, and three. Her success brought them every material comfort, and Diana and the girls were living in this 12-room house in Beverly Hills. I remember that Diana was unsatisfied with the decor of the room we had chosen for our interview, so within 24 hours before we arrived, she had it completely refurnished. When we spoke then, Diana was divorced from her first husband, Robert Silberstein. She was in the middle of a sold-out engagement at the Universal Amphitheater in Los Angeles, and was having a love affair with thousands of adoring fans every night. And yet what I remember most from my interview is the loneliness that Diana described, how after a show she would come home alone. Yes, the Diana Ross I initially met was in transition and a little vulnerable. <laughs> what do you read sometimes? Because I do a lot of, you know, I do a lot of homework before. And some of the articles talked about your being um, cold or difficult or testy. Where does that stuff come from? Gee, uh, I have been cold and testy. I, that is one of the things. That when, you're, when you're wanting everything to be right, a lot of times you make a lot of mistakes and you are quite rough on people and you forget. And I have all different sides of me, just like everybody else. Sometimes I'm really uptight and rude and nervous, and sometimes I'm sweet and wonderful and loving, mm -hmm. and everybody loves me. I can't and sometimes right they hate me. Yeah. <laughs> no, lately, in, in the last couple of years of my life, I just, I've just gotten better. I mean, I'm not, it, once, I don't know. I, it's just got, I've gotten better about my relationship with people. I'm not half as frightened, maybe. Once again, I say that it, I'm not half as afraid. Why not? You frightened me before when we met. You frighten me a lot, but you don't frighten me half as much now. Do you remember what I said to you last yes, night? Yes, I'll when never we met? forget it. Just, uh, no, no. When I came backstage last night, I said, "Don't be afraid of me." Yes, and I read. I did a little research on you too before we did the show. I read a lot about you, <laughs> so I wanted to take the time to know you, which also helps mm -hmm. me to be a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. you, know. you talk about the fact, though, that you're not afraid anymore. What made not the difference? Not totally. I still have fears. What but, are you, you know, afraid of? Uh, just lots of things, M messing up, one thing, and being good, and people liking me. I think How could you mess up? How oh, you well, you can. I really am, because I've always, I guess, being a second child and always wanted attention, and whatever the reasons I'm in show business today, I've always wanted everyone to care about me. And you can't get everybody to love you, I guess, I, you know, and I try very hard. It's just like, love me, love me, love me, please. You do know? you feel that way when you're on stage? Love yes. Me, love me. Yeah? Yes. Do you feel they do? Yes. When you come out on the stage and you're so divine and the sequins and the furs and everything's just dripping, you have a line in which you say, whatever happened to that girl from the uh, Brewster uh, housing project yes. in Detroit? Uh, do, you, do I still remember that girl? And then, you, and then your answer is, nope. No, that, it, the lines are, no. um, uh, whatever happened to Diana Ross from the Brewster projects in Detroit? Whatever happened to that girl? And you know what I say to that? I say, who? <laughs> and that is a joke, so that everybody... I remember the girl very clearly. The source of my life has not changed really that much. My ambitions are the same. My caring about people and, and uh, love for children is all the same. Not, lots of that ha hasn't changed in me. If I asked you what your idea of the perfect life would be for you, yes. what would it be? I picture myself in, in some beautiful home with a lot of land around me. I want some space. I want to be, um, I want to be where there's grass and trees and things like that. I grew up in Detroit City. Mm -hmm. I moved out here and I haven't really, I didn't, I, I didn't buy space, you know. I got a small little area here. It's wonderful. It's not, but I don't have where my kids could run free. You know, I would love to have some land somewhere. The kids with you there in this, mm -hmm. in this yes, perfect life? absolutely. Okay. 
Is there picket a man? Fence and picket fence and horses and horses. stuff like that. <laughs> Is there a husband? Yes, of course. Oh, why of course? Because I just love the whole family unit. And to me, the father part is a very important part, you know, for husband. So you think you're going to get married again? I'd love to. Really? Yes. I don't know where he's at yet, but <laughs> I would. What would you look for? Oh, someone that would understand my kind of life. You know, it's very difficult for a man, for a woman uh, in show business, I think. I have to look and really take a look that it must be difficult if, if someone accidentally calls you Mr. Ross or... I heard this is was difficult for for your husband before? Uh, I think it must have been. I don't think he admitted it, but I think finally it did mm -hmm. get to him. I mean, it was just something that wasn't... It's not fun. Is that what broke the marriage up? Um, I think yes. Do you date now? Are there men is, in your life? No, I haven't had time. I, mean, that's <laughs> I, I, I never read about it. You know, yes, you'd love to get married, but who do you see? Yeah, I haven't dated anyone yet. Do you yeah. miss it? Yes, a little bit, but not really. You know, I'm really very busy, not where I have to think. I, I think about it tell you the exact times when it's very painful. It's when you leave a show like last night where all the people are out there and they're giving you all this love and you know you're getting all the feelings and you're performing and it's back and forth really mm -hmm. give and take all very good. You come backstage and you have your wonderful close friends backstage and then you come home at night by yourself. And in those cases if I hadn't had my children with me a lot of times it would have been unbearable. So I throw myself into my work and I throw myself into raising of my children which is really okay now. It's not, it's not that painful. You know, I mean, life is, uh, I feel like I can really be, uh, get along without having a man around all the time. I just, I think I can, you know, I think. With your kids now, is there a conflict between the working women and, and the children? Are you pulled? You know, it's all the question. I, I talk yes. to you and I'm talking about myself. Yes, honestly, I am, yeah. Could you give it up? Yeah. You could give up the career for yes, the kids? Yes, I think I could. Really? Mm-hmm. I thought of it very seriously a couple times, you know? Why? Uh, because if I felt that they really needed me, my kids are very strong and very independent, and I don't think they need me. Yeah. But if I thought that they really needed me, any of my children individually or all together, mm -hmm. that if they really had to have mommy there, if they didn't have the security or health-wise or whatever, this was not important. They were the most important things in my life. And you wouldn't starve emotionally? No, or? absolutely not. I could give uh, up my career and, and still find other... Mm -hmm. other paths to get this energy out or this whatever this is mm -hmm. inside of me that has to get out. With everything that you've gone through, the good and the bad and the ups and the downs, would you want your kids to be in show business? Is it what you would wish for them? If that's what made them happy. Would it make you happy if they were? Yes, it would be okay. Is it a it's good life? It's not bad, yes. It's not bad at all. Is it the best life? Yes. It's nothing better. I don't, what else would I be doing that's better than this? You know, you have, I have to, you have to remember where I'm from and, and what we had offered to us. My sister being a doctor was incredible in our lives, you know. She fought hard. My sister studied from the time I knew her. She was always studying to become a doctor. That's important. You know, it's an important thing to do. And my, my dad, you know, my singing, you know, do something important. You know, he didn't think that singing would amount. I'm going to be singing for the president next week, you know. What do you really want now that you might not you know, ordinarily admit, but that, you know, it really hurts you, it really matters. Oh, there's a lot of things. A new fur coat. Not <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'd like to be in love. It's a time and a part of my life that uh, was absolutely incredible. And I don't feel like I'm in love. It's, you know, I like having my, my husband. And I, I'm not in love right now. I do, that's why I'm not dating, because I don't even feel it. I mean, if I met somebody that excited me, it would be different. I have not right at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but the whole idea of being in love is, is just wonderful for me. I'm not in love right now, and that's sad to me, because I like love. I do very much. What are you most proud of? Uh, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I like to pat myself on the back a little bit. I'm proud that uh, I learned... Uh, a lot about human relationships in the last year and that I'm not, that I love, you know. I'm proud of me and I'm proud of my kids. I'm proud of what I've done and, uh, of, you know, you know, I'm proud of my relationships with Motown and Barry Gordy and, and, and I'm not sad about anything. I wouldn't, I did a song in my last show, I wouldn't change a thing. If I could live my life all over, I wouldn't change a thing and I really wouldn't. Next, Diana Ross on her new life and her new love.